Hey everyone, I'm Ben. And I'm Sam. This is Counterfeit Christianity. We were just uh, having a conversation about what we should talk about next. We've got a big list. Mm. But the, the one we, that... What we decided on is that women shouldn't be allowed to vote. We decided that women shouldn't be allowed to vote. Yeah. And um, Now, we'll just let you simmer with that for a second. Yeah. Females of the human species would be better off if they weren't allowed to vote. Mm -hmm. We would all so be better off. How, how, how do we get to that? You know, let's... Uh, Let's start from the beginning. Well, we did talk about it a lot. We have talked about all these issues in the past. And yeah. it, it sort of starts... It'd be good I to think. put them together. Yeah, it sort of yeah. starts... Like, we've talked about the, the return of the gods before. Mm -hmm. And um, the one specifically connected to this one is the, is the is Ish, is Ishtar. Ishtar. So yeah. she's like the, you know, the goddess of like transgender and homosexuality, yeah. prostitution. Um, Rainbow flag. The devaluation of the human condition, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's, um, I think that's why God hates things like prostitution. Yeah. Uh, particularly because it's really demeaning to, to another human. Yeah. To have one human be able to buy another human's body intimately for money means that the other human who's selling their body is probably in a disadvantaged place where yep. they, can't, they, they need to do that to live because intimacy is something that people don't usually want to give away. Mm -hmm. So if you're giving that away to someone you don't like, Possibly someone who's old and ugly and gross, yep. you know, because that's why they're they're paying for this sort of thing. Then you're really demeaning yourself, and you're really demeaning yep. the human condition. And God really hates that. Yeah, yeah. And so Ishtar is the goddess of all those different things, yep. and she's she's alive. She, she's she's real. the goddess of demeaning women. Yep. So the whole idea of uh, feminism to empower women and you know all, all this stuff, it actually isn't there to help women. It's there to demean them. Yep. You know, and after they've finished actually. You know, breaking up society and turning women and men against each other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now they've rung on the t the trans thing, and they've told all the women who are strong and empowered and important, and etc., that you know what, women don't even exist. Women don't matter. And yeah, what uh, is a woman? Someone who used to be a man can now come in the bathroom with you and your daughter. Yeah. You know, like, you mm -hmm. know, how how has that been empowering for women? Yeah. That is demeaning to women. Yeah, you, it's you just have, right. You have yeah. trashed women. Someone would assume like from the right title now. of this video that women shouldn't be allowed to vote, that yeah. we disrespect women. Yeah. But really, that, we're the actually whole, the opposite. The opposite. God yeah. made women. Yeah. God made men. Yep. The, the, the current system disrespects women, and that mm -hmm. is what we demean. That, that yeah. is what we poke fun at. That is what we oppose. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And the feminist woman now, who's like, well, there's quite a few old feminist women now, and then their lives seem uh, extremely unhappy. Like, we do, f there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them there. You know, we, we all know the term cat ladies. Mm -hmm. Cat ladies, and then the younger generation below them are the, are the single mums, and we all know how bad that is. And like, yeah. Yeah, well, I guess one of the big themes is, is fatherlessness. Yep. You know, We've guess, talked about that if, before as well. If we, we had to start from somewhere. It's that people used to live in these families, and not just a nuclear family, no. but like an extended family. You have the grandparents, and you have the parents, and then maybe you have um, a young couple with their first kid or uh, whatever. Ollie. I'll tell you yeah. how it works in Thailand. Like my wife's family is an amazing family. Like it started off with a, a really good grand. Her grandfather was an amazing man. He owned all the land in the area. He was really smart. And then he had uh, a few kids, and they all live in the same area. And then Nung was sharing. My wife Nung, she was sharing with me the story of how when they were young families of how they helped each other all the time. This family didn't have enough food. They all fed each other. They all shared each other. That is a multi generational family, and it's not. It's, that's not usual in Thailand. Their family is unusual. So, it used to be yeah. like that in Australia too. Yep. It's still like that in a lot mm. of countries. But I don't know. We sort of have this, Indians this, do it very this well. nuclear family mm. now, which creates isolation. You have, yeah. end up having the old people in homes or you know, in some house by themselves. Mm -hmm. And then you have this other family and then they don't have the support. And then the family isn't supporting their, their parents either. You know, there was something beautiful, I think, previously about having families either really close together or even living in the yeah. same house. Yep. You know, and yep. That, that doesn't happen now. I think that the, our parents' generation decided to believe the lie. I, I think that we'll bring this idea into this, like, our parents' well, it, generation it, believed the lie and then they sold it to that to us. If you, but, if yeah. you create a false narrative and create a false problem, like the, the feminists created the idea of a, a patriarchy where men step on women. Yeah. A hundred years ago, whatever, I think women were happier. You had people to be create protected. a false narrative about... Um, the badness of men first. They yeah. try and convince women that, you know, and then they try and yeah. convince men they're bad too. That's what happened when you we know? were kids. That was the story back then. Because the, the idea yeah. is that men don't want men, women to vote, men want to control you, men want to do this. And it's like, well, men have this authority on them, this mantle from God, that, that the masculine, that they're supposed to lead the family and mm. they're supposed to be responsible. And, you know, the woman has a different mantle that complements the man. It's not mm. supposed to be, I'm better than you, I'm bigger than you, I'm telling yeah. you what to do or whatever. But, but the feminists created this idea that that's what men want. It's the patriarchy. We have to control. We have to push the women down. 
I don't think that's the case. You mm. know, I think um, men would try and overwhelming majority of men would try and treat their wife well and, yep. and, and care about them and love them. Yep. And so when all this feminist stuff comes along, that whole narrative, that idea that men want to control and they really, you know, don't want women to do this and they want to block women, it's shown to be a lie because mm -hmm. as soon as men didn't have to have that mantle of responsibility, they were quite happy to walk away from it. You know, we'll go live on the Xbox mm -hmm. or go live at the pub with their mates or, you know, once you take that mantle of responsibility off, the men just go have fun. Yeah. Like, they were taking responsibility yeah. before because that's really what they were supposed to do. Yeah. Um, it's really and, sad, isn't it? And, because and the men the, go have fun and the women get angry. All it does is create this angst on one side where the woman feels that she has to be all these things that she isn't and the man's over here and he's like, oh, I'm free of all my responsibilities. I'll do whatever I want. Yep. And, you know, the woman's over here getting all mad about it because she doesn't even know who, what she's supposed to be anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like, Am I supposed to be trans? Am I supposed to be a strong, independent woman? Am I supposed to like get rid of my husband because the patriarch is evil? What about my children? I have a son. Should I hate him too? I notice now that a lot of men have just done that. They've stepped they stepped back, out. and they're not a part of it anymore. So there's no men leading the family. It's the it's men like, aren't yeah. happy either. Yeah, they're not happy. They, they, yeah. they are supposed to want to have responsibility and you know um, look after people and provide and. You know, they, they, men enjoy that. Yep. And when they don't have to do that anymore and they just do whatever they want, they sort of they're fade, lost. They fade yeah. away to nothing. Because mm -hmm. um, what are they? And, and the women just um, turn into this sort of ball of frustration and anger and despair. Like the, you have these two sides that are supposed to be together helping each other, but instead these forces have worked together really hard to split them apart yep. with a lot of different lives. Yeah, because fatherless society is our society. Just look at us. Yeah. We're broken and done. And there's, there's only very few men who are men with God. That's like the journey that we've been on. We're on this journey of being men with God and then being healed of all of the, the lies that we've had to live under and all the trauma that we've received because of that. And then we're on the way back. And, and, we're, and, and it's not just that from the, from the Ishtar side of things, it's also from the religious side of things that we're also getting free of. So, yeah, well, that yeah. takes a long time. Yeah. You know, that, the, all, all the religious indoctrination and religious abuse is, is mm. difficult. Yeah. You know, especially because, you know, you've learned this stuff in good faith, thinking that it's good and thinking that it's from God, not realizing how much humans have perverted God's word mm -hmm. and, and his <laughs> message. So, I think there's, there's something that's popping into my mind is if you're a young man and you see this, like, how mm -hmm. do you find a woman of who is good and a woman of God. It's like the only chance that you have is like how God brought us together to be friends even. It's just like you have to ask God, it's like show me those people. There's no chance without it. You can't find them yourself. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Sam, you have a bit of a different opinion. You think it's impossible to find girls, you reckon, nowadays? Uh, um, I'd feel despair yeah, <laughs> for them, yeah. particularly uh, Australian women. Australian women, I think, and Western women in general have been indoctrinated to be the most toxic people on earth. Yeah. Like, it's all about me. It's all about what can I take. So even the men that do want to, um, um, you know, be committed and have that mental responsibility, they can't really trust that the, the system that has you know been around all these people for so long is actually going to not destroy their life yeah like, there's no chance on your own i, I just like um, i tell my son that you need to just be with god and he'll bring the right person to you because you can't do it on your own and it's like you can, literally cannot and the only way through life is with god and so that's what i would encourage people if you're interested in that sort of thing you know, be with god god did that for me and uh not with an Australian woman, but yeah. The rules of Ishtar and Baal and Molech and, you know, Molech is the, world. Molech's the baby killer. Baal is, uh, you know, money all God. that money. Uh, church, the, the God church, of the church. Yeah. Government, rules, that sort yeah. of stuff. And then we have Ishtar who's all around, uh, you know. Destroying families. Destroying families, destroying men, destroying women. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all that good demon stuff. Yeah, and it's, uh, it, our world is overtaken by them. They have a fully and it taken over our world. They have returned with a vengeance. So uh, what the fuck does that have to do with women not voting? Well, <laughs> well, what we're really talking about is, is one family unit where, you know, they're together and they're unified. Unlike now where everyone's divided. So when you used to have one family unit and one vote, I'm sure the husband and wife talk about who they want to support and who they like and, and what and why, but they weren't able to split society up before. There was only one vote for a family. Mm -hmm. So that family stands together, right? Yep. But now, when you split the family up, maybe you have the wife voting one way and the husband voting another way, or maybe you, you, know, you focus on all this stuff to, to convince the wife on stuff, and then she convinces the husband. But it's a way to divide people. Yep. So that is really what we're getting at. Not yeah. that women don't have, uh, you know. The ability to, they're, they're, they're smart. They're, they're able to, they're capable of it. But I mean, yeah. I think- uh, It's just not good for society. Leave us your comments about that. We really appreciate them, negative you, or positive. If you think that maybe women shouldn't be allowed to drive, shouldn't be allowed to go to the shop, maybe shouldn't speak when spoken to, let us know. Yeah, yeah. 
Or if you're a woman who really disagrees with that, you can also let us know. No, that's good. Leave us comments. We really appreciate it, don't we? So, yeah. Yeah, right. See ya.